Part of your post-production workflow should include equalizing, using things like compressors, and possibly noise gates to make sure your audio sounds the best it can. We're going to go over using some of those tools, and we're showing the examples here in Final Cut Pro, but these tools are pretty much in any application you might use, whether that's Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, Logic Pro 10, or in Final Cut Pro. And while we explain the different settings each filter and effect has, you'll really need to experiment with the audio and video that you've recorded, because your voice in your recording is going to be different than the examples we play here. Let's talk about equalization. You should apply an EQ to pretty much any piece of audio you record. An equalizer will adjust the volumes of specific frequencies in your recording to either remove muddiness, remove high-pitched noises that might be harsh to hearing, maybe it sounds a little boxy and you need to remove some of the mids. That's what an equalizer can do to make sure your voice sounds great. Here's an audio clip without any equalization applied. Riverside is the best way to record high-quality video and audio content with remote guests so that's my voice recorded in a microphone just raw, no equalization. Now for my voice, I do want to remove some of the lows and boost some of the high mids because it gives a little more clarity to my voice. So I'm going to click that audio clip here in Final Cut and then choose the Effects Editor. Then here under All Audio Effects, I can find Channel EQ. You'll also find other tools down here as far as distortion. Or you can jump right to the EQ section. And again, Channel EQ will do just fine. So I'm going to drag that onto the clip. And you'll see that effect appear in this window, Channel EQ. Now I would open this panel right here, and it gives you a graphical representation of the equalization. And here it is totally flat, so no changes have been applied. I want to remove some of the lows, so I'm going to click that icon there, and then drag this circle down to cut out some of the lows. Now it's actually cutting a little too much, and what you can do there is actually put your mouse here on the lines on the border, and drag those closer together. And that will actually give you a little more granular control over that low scoop, or removing the low frequencies. And so now that I've had some lows removed, I also would like to add some more frequencies in the 2K range. The 2K, 5K, those are kilohertz audio ranges. And typically, for clarity, you might need to boost those high mids just a little bit, and maybe remove the low mids. And just so you know, a high mid would probably be between the 1 and 2K mark. A low mid would be between the 1K and 200 mark. Those would be the low mids. And of course, the highs are way up here. If you're doing spoken word or voice recordings, you probably don't need many of the high frequencies. Most voices don't even reach that high. So you can cut out some of the highs as well and see how that sounds. And again, I'm going to boost these kind of mids around the 2K mark. So I'm going to drag that up a little bit and then narrow it down. Because again, I'm not trying to boost a ton of frequencies. I just want those boosted. So now let's hear what that sounds like. Riverside is the best way to record high quality video and audio content with remote guests. So you can see remove some of the muddiness of my voice and added a little clarity. I'm going to take that 2K down just a little bit and maybe even boost some of those low mids. And boosting these low mids might add a little more body to the voice. Again, I can narrow that range a little bit. Now let's see what that sounds like. Riverside is the best way to record high quality video and audio content with remote guests. I think that sounds pretty good. Now again, you can boost frequencies way up or way down to hear how it's going to affect your voice. It gives you a better idea of what that frequency is actually adjusting. So let's try that in that 2K range. I'm going to adjust it while the audio clip plays. Riverside is the best way to record high quality video and audio content with remote guests or in person and others remotely. You can see when I drag that frequency way down, it sounds like I'm in a tunnel or in a box. I lost a lot of clarity, but when it goes too high, then it gets real nasally and kind of not natural to my voice. Again, I'll move the 2K to about five decibel increase. You'll see the five over here, five decibel increase. Let's hear what that sounds like. Riverside is the best way to record high quality video and audio content I'm pretty happy with that EQ. And again, if you record in the same environment with the same microphone, same audio interface over and over again, you can save this preset. And then this can be the preset of the EQ you apply to your voice anytime. And don't forget, EQ tool is available in pretty much any application you would use to edit. Logic Pro, Adobe Premiere, and of course here in Final Cut. Another tool you might want to use is a compressor and limiter. A compressor can increase the gain, but of course you have to be careful because it can distort if you push it too much. A compressor can also reduce loud sounds. So if you had someone that laughs really loudly or talked very loudly, but only at certain times, a compressor can help limit that so it's a more even volume. Here's a clip that could probably use a compressor, but that I haven't applied yet. Welcome to Riverside. It's the best way to record high quality video and audio content. So you can see I was getting a little excited there and that middle part doesn't really match the intro. So I'm gonna select that audio clip. Here under the same audio effects panel, I'm gonna to go to levels and you'll see the compressor tool. I'm going to drag the compressor onto that audio clip. I'm going to click that same icon to open the compressor settings. 
This is actually what the compressor looks like in Logic Pro and Final Cut. It's the exact same tool. And here I can increase the input and output gain if I need to get a little more volume from my track. Again, you need to be mindful it doesn't overdrive or start distorting. And then you'll see a threshold and ratio knobs here. The threshold means once the volume goes past a certain decibel level, like minus 20 or minus 12, the compressor will then decrease the volume to match the rest of the track better. Then the ratio knob tells you how much it will decrease it. The ratio tells you that as it goes above that threshold, it'll reduce it at a two to one value or even a four to one value. The higher the ratio, the more it's going to reduce those loud sounds. So just to hear what it sounds like, let's change the threshold pretty high. Let's change the threshold to about minus 30. That means it's probably gonna be active on most of the audio in this clip. And let's increase the ratio really high. We probably wouldn't do this normally. We'll do a close to eight ratio there and let's see what it does. Welcome to Riverside. It's the best way to record high quality video and audio content. I see that threshold is probably affecting the entire track. So we need to adjust the threshold. Let's go to about minus 20 again. And I need to decrease that input gain because as you can see, it was turning yellow down here. That means it's a little too much volume for that track. Welcome to Riverside. It's the best way to record high quality video and audio. It's a little better, but what I need to do is actually add a limiter now. So make sure it doesn't go over a certain decibel level. And there's actually one right here in the compressor tool. So I can turn on the limiter and I'm gonna change that threshold to minus four. That means the volume will not go above minus four decibel level the entire time, no matter what. And you can see the audio clip actually changed down here. It brought down those loud sounds and it will not go above that minus four threshold. Now let's see what that sounds like. Welcome to Riverside. It's the best way to record high quality video and audio content with anyone, anywhere. That last part of the audio clip was actually much softer, but the compressor is doing its best to bring down those loud sounds. Another tool you can add is called an expander, and an expander will increase the volume to try and match the rest of the track, while the limiter will bring it down. This way you can try and get an even volume without manually making corrections throughout your entire recording. Here I'm gonna drag the expander tool onto the same clip, and I'm gonna go down to the expander, and you'll see here there's another threshold and a ratio. I'll leave it just like it is. I'll leave the threshold at minus 20, and let's see what it does now to this entire track. Welcome to Riverside. It's the best way to record high quality video and audio content with anyone, anywhere. So it did a pretty good job of evening the volume, even when I'm very loud in the middle and then very soft at the end, and it makes it easier to listen to. So those are some great tools to adjust the volume throughout a recording. And if you need to boost the volume overall, play with those input and output gains in the compressor. One last tool you might wanna use is called a noise gate. But a noise gate is an effect that will actually mute a track once the volume drops below a certain level. Let's take this audio clip, for example, which has some rain sounds. And while I'm talking, you can still kind of hear the rain in the background. Let's hear what that sounds like. And now we can try to cut out that background noise from the rest of our recording. Ideally, you'd probably wanna use some kind of noise reduction on this clip to cut out the rain sounds and make sure the voice is still clear. But you can also use a noise gate, which will mute the track when it's a soft sound and still let my voice come through. Once again, I'll go to the effects panel. I'll go to levels. And here you'll find the noise gate effect. When I drag that onto the panel, you see now I can see the noise gate here under the effects. Click the panel for the noise gate. And now you'll see there's a threshold and reduction level. That means anything quieter than minus 20 will be reduced 100 decibels, meaning you really won't hear it. And then these settings like attack and hold adjust how quickly the noise gate enacts and disables. So let's hear what the stock noise gate sounds like. And now we can try to cut out that background noise from the rest of our recording using the Adobe Audition Capture Noise. You can see it's actually cutting out the rain when I'm not talking, but it's still cutting out some of my voice. So we would need to adjust this threshold. We might need to lower it maybe to minus 30 so it just gets the rain and not my voice. Let's hear what that does. And now we can try to cut out that background noise from the rest of our recording using the Adobe Audition Capture Noise Print feature. And so you see it still keeps my voice and you can hear it, but it mutes the track anytime it falls below a certain decibel level so you don't hear the rain in the silences. Maybe you had a guest that had an air conditioner or other constant noise in the background and using a noise reduction tool makes it sound too digital or computery. You can apply a noise gate so it at least mutes their track when they're not talking. So those are some audio effects and tools from compressor and EQ to a noise gate, limiter, and expander. If you have questions on anything in this video, leave a comment below. We'd love to engage with you there and subscribe to the Riverside YouTube channel and hit that bell icon. We have lots of videos on video switchers, automating your podcast workflow, and a ton more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.